Welcome to the Dolls and Donuts podcast, episode Dirty 30. In today's episode, we're going to tell you what's going on in the animal rights community, what's been happening at Robin's Vegan Dollhouse, and we're going to tell you all about what we ate in Austin. And it might be Dirty 30 for one of us, but I'm celebrating Clean 30 over here <laughs> on this side of the table. Neither of us are celebrating 30 anymore. <laughs> Ever again. Ever again. <laughs> Um, so I saw on your Instagram that you played dress up this month. What were you doing? Oh, um, Apple had their <laughs> Christmas party in April, uh, Wait, why? in February. Cause it's, I don't know, cheaper, oh, I guess oh. they can do more with less. Cause you know, places like jack up the prices of everything. Oh, okay. It, like, spe- Apple had their party and it was, um, like twenties themed. Oh, okay. So that, that seems was my twenties like attire. Room. Do oh, you, yeah. did they, do they have vegan food at those events or? So the previous ones I've been to were really like disappointing yeah. and annoying. This one, they had like a really good variety Ooh, and a lot. So nice. I like, yeah. And, and is it all labeled? Adult. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was labeled. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that, I don't know if people like complain because there's lots of vegans at Apple. There must be. And I know this time I had high hopes because Matt even said like, oh, it asked like what your diet is like. And so you like. Oh, on the like RSVP yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh. Which they'd never done that before yeah. for the ones I went to. So oh, nice. I was like, oh, okay. They're going to take it into consideration. They're thinking about it. Yeah. Um, and there was, there was some good stuff. Nice. Yeah. I was happy with it. Did you dance? No, I watch people dance. <laughs> there was one guy that had like a broken foot or something. He's out there with his crutch and he was like <laughs> using his crutch as like a dancing prop. It was Aww, hilarious. That's cute. Yeah, good for him. He only like did like two songs and he was gone. He's I was like, you can't hold for... me down. Yeah. He... Crutch. <laughs> <laughs> that was his like, broken his, that was his dancing partner. I think he fell in love with it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, like, oh, did you, where did you get your stuff for this? I'm like, I owned everything. <laughs> I am not of this time. I'm a time traveler. Um, so for like, I have mostly, I would say 50s. 50s is like, all yeah. my like vintage inspired or vintage stuff is like mostly 70% 50s. Okay. And then the rest are like other eras, 20s and other others. So I didn't have a lot, ton to choose from, but I had a ready-made outfit for the 20s. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> now I know where to come if I'm ever invited to a 20s party. Mm-hmm. Or any kind of era gone by, I'll have something for you. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. to know. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Closet Ashley, open for business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Time travel closet. <laughs> um, that's fun. I haven't done any, like, dress-up activities in so long. I can't even, like, remember the last time I dressed up. Well, it should make this this tea party we're going to have yes. a dress-up. This is going to be... I have, like, the dress yeah, for it. You already mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Is, like, it this is the from perfect. this era or <laughs> um yeah yeah current era pretty maybe 90s <laughs> does it have Nobody... bunnies on it no oh, okay no i don't i don't currently have any dresses with bunnies i have uh, in the past but i want dresses with bunnies i just ordered one off taobao that had squirrels but it's not gonna get here in time mm. no mine's all floral it's mm, all flowers okay. i think that's probably what most people will wear yeah I haven't worn it yet. I bought it. I was like, someday, somehow, somewhere, this is going to be appropriate to wear. It's going to be perfect. Really? This the is your first come. Oh, yeah. It gets to come out for it, the first Yeah, it's going to be its coming out oh, event. Oh, that's really cute. Yeah. I okay. got it at Goodwill, like most of my clothes. That's what this outfit I'm wearing now, all from Goodwill. And I was, it was like, it said like, made for you. Like, so I think someone just made it at home. Uh, like, I think it's a homemade dress. Yeah. It doesn't have like any other any other mark, anything on it mm-hmm. besides that one tag that was like, obviously somebody bought, you know, bought yeah. the tags and then put it on their clothes that they make. Um, and somebody gave it to Google and I was like, who let oh. this gem go? <laughs> <laughs> They're lost. They're my lost. Game. And like a big fluff, you know, bouquet of flowers. And it's got like long, <laughs> oh, you'll wait till you see it. I can't wait. I love it. Um, for those of you at home who might not know what we're talking about, we're having a bunny pastel themed tea party on easter yes and so maybe if we remember to take pictures we can post some i, I hate when i do that what? we do like forget to take pictures yeah like we yeah. do all this or that I and we're like i know i know I because it. but you know what the good side of forgetting to take pictures is it means we're living in the moment 
That's true. Which I think is better. We're living our lives. Yeah, if you had to have the pictures or the experience, of course I'd pick that, the experience. So, but it's You just want your cake but, and you want to eat it too. Yeah, like you can take like a minute and do it and I then know. go back to the moment. Yeah, I know. I know. I always forget. Well, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being our brain on Easter of a tea party. So now I have all this pressure. <laughs> all right. So if you guys don't see something about. on our Instagram within a few weeks, then we know whose brain to blame. <laughs> yeah, come down my, burn down my door. It'll be my fault. <laughs> um, well, I've had a really exciting month for animals. I don't know how many animals you've seen this month. I guess we haven't recorded in longer than a month, right? It's been like six weeks, maybe. This is pretty, yeah. This is pretty close to the post date. So. Yeah. So I, we, do, I just saw so a spider. <laughs> Does that count? Mm, that's an animal. <sighs> there was. I specifically invited the spider in because I knew Ashley was coming. Have over a close encounter, and she would want to see my pet spider <laughs> when she got here. And she, and then Robin took him for a walk. Now he's outside. Yeah. And now I don't even know if he'll ever come back. I never took any pictures. I have no recollection of our time spider together. Mother. <laughs> God, I know, I know, I am. Um, I definitely took a lot of pictures of elephants when I went to the pause oh, sanctuary um, to make up for the lack of spider pictures that I took today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when we were in Austin, we saw donkeys. Did you see the donkeys when you were in Austin? No, I, I didn't see any animals. When I was in that was mostly in the city. Yeah, and go anywhere with animals. Oh no, I was in the city. Weirdly, uh, no, it was like I in someone's backyard. Oh no, I didn't. They see just any had animals. some donkeys because that's what you do when you live in Austin. Apparently, is you just have donkeys in your backyard. I, I believe it. They were I, really it seems cute. totally like to be normal there. I know. I feel like I could almost say any sentence, and you could be like, "Yeah, I could see that happening in Austin." Yeah. I just don't know what to expect. Yeah, it's such a like conglomerate of. It's just a random place. It is, huh? Yeah. I wonder if we have any listeners who live in Austin. Maybe they can give us their viewpoint. Maybe we can compare notes and mm-hmm. tell us about the donkey situation because I'm curious. Um, it looked like it was like a, there were apartments that you could rent and you would be like on the property with the donkeys. It was very confusing. Weird. I tried so hard to figure it out and failed. That's weird. Um, but I did go to the zoo which I was excited about. And you didn't go to the zoo, right? Just the regular zoo? Yeah. I don't it, go to zoos. Well, in Austin, it's a sanctuary. Okay. That, I was waiting for the, <laughs> the, the, to catch up there. Well, I think I, you did tell me after, after, I, after I came back. Oh, okay. Um, I think you oh, yeah, we were com- you were giving me notes yeah. on where to go. Um, Ashley and I, I did not go to Austin together, you no, guys. No, like a month apart-ish. Yeah. To be... No, more than that. I went in January, so two months apart. I'm just late. I'm always just late to the game. I tried to go with her, Always but trying to just be like me. Too busy, so I had to go after. I had to copy. <laughs> um, well, I will say that I haven't been to a zoo in pff, however many years, like yeah. 20 years or something ridiculous. Um, and so it's still sad. There's still animals in cages. Yeah. You know? So even though it's a sanctuary and I don't feel bad about supporting them financially, it's still some of the cages made me sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But I got to feed a llama. And that was really, really it exciting for me. It didn't spit on you? It didn't spit on me. Did the ones that spit on people? Um, or is that camel? No, I think they both spit. Okay. But I've never been spit on by a llama. And we've come very, I've come really close to them and had like prolonged Within spitting range, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Definite spitting range. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, I always kind of have it in the back of my mind, like, is this is spitting going to happen right now? <laughs> <laughs> are we having a moment? Are, are, we, are you going to spit on me? Like, <laughs> you're just staring into each other's eyes and he's like, <clears throat> you ready? <laughs> Clearing his throat. Yeah. Um, this one was definitely only interested in food and nothing else. Well, like most living things. Yes. I try, I would like feed and then try to do this sneaky thing where I'd like f- do the feed and pet, but it was like, no, it like had it down. It was oh, like, like that dodge, chicken. like that chicken. Eat dodge, eat dodge. Yes, yeah, like chicken. a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, when am I going to forget for uh, like perfect this technique of the feed and pet? I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I've been trying. It works with dogs. That's it. Um, 
And then another highlight of my trip, I mean, obviously, the feeding the llamas was the highlight of the zoo trip. Mm-hmm. But the other highlight was that there were lemurs there, and they were, lemurs. like, licking each other. These two lemurs. And it was the fucking cutest thing I've oh, ever I seen love in my life. I love them. I was obsessed with them in elementary I didn't school. Know, I never knew I how was cute like, they were. all about the lemurs in elementary school. I think this is my first time seeing lemurs. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they're freaking adorable. They're really cute, huh? Mm-hmm. Maybe I should make yeah. lemur food. Yeah. Okay. Right now, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe not in time for the tea party, but I'll so keep it in. Cute. Keep it in well, they're not room. bunny or pastel. Yeah. So I don't think they, they work for. I was thinking about making Hello Kitty treats, though, which is that bunny or you made the rules. Well, it'll be pastel. Oh, okay, that's fine. But it won't be bunny. I'm trying a new thing, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about it. The last tea party you brought bunny-shaped cucumbers. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. How, <laughs> how creative and amazing that is. I loved that. It's not the only thing I brought, but that was no. the only thing that was bunny-shaped. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I don't, mean, I don't, remember, I don't no. want the listeners to think you just showed up with only cucumbers. I don't know. But honestly, I don't remember what else I brought. You I made, made sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing that like again. Field roast. They were good. Yeah. I'm like gonna field roast slices. I'm gonna make like two different kinds and bring some. Okay. But um good. Because I know Lizzie's making bringing some too. She's she said she was gonna bring a sandwich. Okay. Or something. Her sandwich that she described sounded unusual. Okay. I yeah. don't remember what it was, but I remember thinking, oh, I've I think I'm gonna do like before. basic like chow field yeah. roast one and then something else. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go wrong with those basic ones. They're so delicious. You can't. They're so good. Yeah, they are good. So Yes. I don't, why did we talk about that? Um, <laughs> oh, because I wanted to make lemur food based on the right, kissing right, right. lemurs. I don't right. know if they were kissing or cleaning each other, but it was just the cutest thing. I just couldn't handle it. It was too much cute. Um, I love lemurs. So, yeah. So, I did. I wrote all about the experience at the zoo on, the blog, on my blog. So, if people want to know more details about it and make an educated decision, I wrote the pros and cons. Mm-hmm. And then you guys can decide if you want to go. Yeah. It is, they do only rescue animals. So that's good. Mm-hmm. As far as zoos go, they don't breed or anything like that. But yeah. That's still a good little sad. <clears throat> a little yeah. bit of sadness. Yeah. Um, okay. And, can I talk about the giveaway? Yeah. Okay. So um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Do you remember? <laughs> the year before, I would say. <laughs> okay. So a couple years ago, we celebrated Record Store Day, which is in April, um, by doing an event at Republica V, which is our vegan grocery store in the East Bay. And the event was... Vegan Republic. (laughs) It's always going to be Republica V to me. Uh, They changed the name to Vegan Republic, in case you guys are Googling this right now. Republica V is better. Calling me out on my errors. Um... But anyway, so for the event, I made little record pops, and I also made a zine, which I feel like goes along with the record kind of theme. I mean, when I started listening to music, that's like what the thing was. It was like records and zines. That's like you Mm -hmm. read zines to figure out about new bands, and then you bought the records. Um, So... I have these zines still. I only gave away like maybe half of them at the event, so I have a lot left. And I found them the other day, and I was thinking, what should I do with these? And since it's record store day again, two years later, if anybody wants one of my mini zines that I made, I would like to give them to you. And so all you have to do to get one is leave us a comment a review. A review. A review. On iTunes. Does it have to be iTunes? What if they listen to the podcast somewhere else? Okay, fine. Okay. But we have to, ch- then we have to check. Leave yeah. us a review. And then we're going to find you, and then we'll, I'll send you an email and get your address so that I can... Can we contact people if they leave a review? How do you contact them? If we... Um, if they leave a review, um, we can always tell them to email us. Okay. We'll be like, you, so you user A, B, C, D, email... Okay. Us so I think your what you should do, the ideal thing then is leave us a comment, then send us an email at dollsanddonuts at gmail.com, and then I will send you a mini scene and maybe other things. I don't know. Just see what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. Maybe we'll like be able to see your review better if it's five stars. <laughs> we probably will. My eyesight isn't what it used to be. <laughs> so, you know, nothing that's a requirement. <laughs> 
I you never like say the, something like yeah, that. Like the font of the review comes out like brighter. The five, like the five, the yellow is more eye catching yes. when five in yes. five stars. So um, <laughs> you know, just saying. <laughs> no persuasion techniques over here or mm-hmm. anything. No. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else going on in life that we need to talk about? Should we go to Axe Cashley? Yeah, let's go ask Ashley. <laughs> and now it's time for Ask Ashley. That's me. So tell me what's up with the animals. Okay, so we, I have four stories this time. Because I did this, my three, and then literally I think that night I was doing it, like this huge news broke that Ooh. was local and it's a big deal. So I'll say that for the end. Okay. Uh, do, you know, do you know what I'm... No. No, okay. Okay. All right, so the first story is that Moby um, is to going to donate all profits from his new album to animal rights groups so if you don't know moby's a musician who's like president of the vegan club basically he owns little pine in la which is a vegan restaurant that donates all profits to our animal organizations so he's a big uh, supporter of animal rights and he does a lot for the cause and so his new um album all the like i said all the profits are going to animal rights groups so uh, you'll be giving uh, money to the causes uh, that hopefully you support, too. So um, he says that the new album explores who we are as a species and des- uh, describing the album as an exploration of humanity as a paradox of light and dark, which okay, very musician talk, but... Um, <laughs> Eccentric musician talk. Yeah. So um, also um, all profits from streaming, sales, licensing, publishing, and live shows as well. So it's not like oh, if you just well. go on iTunes, you buy it, and, and that goes there. But, you know, there, there's a lot more opportunity mm-hmm. for revenue than just that, as the ones I just mentioned. So that, that's all included, so you can feel good about, you know, doing any of those. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that. If you like Moby, it's even more of a reason to buy his new album, which is his 15th, apparently. Mm. Whoa. He's been around for a long time. Um, Do you listen to Moby? No. No, me neither. But I, like, I know him through, like, the vegan stuff. Yeah. Like, that's how I, I follow him on Instagram and stuff. And um, But I don't really listen to him. And music. he's also always at Little Pine every time we go, right? I've seen him once there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that's a good to get some music and donate to a good cause. Our second story is Matthew Morrison says his heart is broken over alleged dog abuse on film set. So Can I have a clueless corner. A clueless corner. <laughs> yeah. Who's Matthew? Morrison? I was just gonna tell you, <laughs> okay. but you may not even know then. Okay. So Matthew Morrison, Morrison's an actor, um, best known as Mr. Schuster, or Mr. Schuster. I think that's his name. Um, <gasps> on Glee. Glee. Yeah. I totally Nate, know who that good is. Good job. Okay, that's him. <laughs> okay. So he filmed this movie called Crazy Alien, which is like a science fiction movie, and there was a. <clears throat> whistleblower on the set that came to PETA saying that a a caged German Shepherd, like a video footage of a caged German Shepherd being dropped into a river on the film set, which which took place in China, which we know does not have good track record with animals. Okay. Wait, Um, I'm so confused. mm -hmm. There's a video on the set? There's a video that was taken on the set of this happening. Okay. So Mm -hmm. on the, the set is being filmed in China. The movies was set in China. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got yeah. It. Okay. Being filled in China. Um, so it says, he, he just comes out to say that he, I'll tell you exactly what happens in the film, but he just came out, he just made a statement that, I've just been made aware and seen a video from the set of a film I worked on in China. My heart is broken to see that any animal treated this way. Had I been on the set or known about this, I would have made all efforts to stop this. I've called the producers to express my outrage. So the video was shot in November, and it shows a cage containing a dog suspended from a crane. Several individuals appear to be holding the cage back with a rope before they suddenly release it. The cage spins wildly in the air, falls into a river, is submerged for several seconds before it's raised back into the air. This is the dog is in the cage, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, it says it's supposed to be simulating um, an al- a scene where an alien picks up the dog and then tosses it around. Um, they didn't receive a response from uh, the production company Dirty Monkey Films. Okay. Nice. Um, they didn't immediately respond. Um, and the whistleblower also said that there were multiple takes of this scene. Another scene mm-hmm. where a handler tormented the dog into a frenzy over a two-hour time period. And the mm-hmm. dog had allegedly never received any breaks. So PETA is calling to urge like the actors and the production to be held accountable. 
Um, and they were also calling for a public boycott of the film. Um, so, you know, they're just trying to Bring get this out there. Else. And look, this is um, something that we saw as well last year with The Dog's Purpose, if you remember. The dog being forced into the water. Um, which, you know, whatever. I haven't seen that movie because of that. So, and it's about a dog dying over and over and over and over and over again, which I'm not interested in seeing anyway. I read the book. I'm not interested in seeing it. Like, I won't ever watch Marley and Me. <laughs> not into it. So, I read the book, but I read both of those books. But I, I haven't watched the movie. But, um, so. Does it not you know, bother somebody, you when you read it? It does, but not the same as seeing it. Like it's still I I can I can still enjoy the experience of the story overall, removed from like their sad stuff in it. But I don't think I could watch the I, I wouldn't I don't want to watch the movies. Take take this take this kind of you know, this cruelty aspect out of it like that kind of stuff, like the subject matter. Mm-hmm. It, I don't want to see I don't want to see it. Yeah. It's bad enough when I see it in my mind when I'm reading. So so but it's easier to read it than it is. I, I to guess see. I guess so because I read both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is something that. Um, Maybe we'll get more, more stuff on because uh, Matthew Morrison is not happy about it, rightfully so. So um, this is kind of this stuff is being like as we said, like, it's a dog's purpose. This stuff is getting. Uh, I don't think it's a new thing. I don't think it's on the rise. I think it's always been there, and I think it's just it's coming out more. Like we talked about pre- in previous episodes, like there's always filming, there's always cameras, you know, especially on this. I mean, this is a film set, of course, but any anything, you know what yeah. I mean? There's always, you know. Um, you're always being filmed, mm-hmm. basically. So this stuff um, can come out um, all the time. So our next story is New York lawmaker reveals pet passenger bill of rights in wake of United Act incident. Did you hear about the dog on United? No. Okay. So the family of a puppy that died on United Airlines flight joined animal rights advocates and lawmakers for a demonstration at the airport. It was the LaGuardia in New York. Um, so the French bulldog puppy died during United flights, United mm-hmm. Airlines flight from Houston to New York. So what happened was he was in a little carrier. There's not a ton is it known about exactly what happened, but mm-hmm. or I, I don't know exactly what happened, but apparently he was in a carrier and the flight attendant made put it up to herself or made them put him in the overhead compartment. You know. You know, where you put your carry-on. Oh, my gosh. Um, no and way. he suffocated to death and died. Of course. When they landed, he died. I can't believe that, that the, the human would have allowed... I, yeah, I don't know. The they're they're to do that. pissed. Of course. Like, freaking out. Because, like, it was, you know... But I'm sorry. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know if she was like, it's going up there. And she's... Apparently, the flight attendant said she didn't know there was a dog in there. I don't know what. Like, we don't know the exact details. Oh but... I would, uh, nobody's touching my no, dog and putting no. them in an hell overhead no. compartment. Hell no. I, and no. No. I'm getting off this plane. If, yeah. I mean, if it's that, if it's that, I'm getting off the plane. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's just so sad. So, I just, yeah, only it's, 10 months old. It's not a that shock it, that the humans would, would have allowed that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure, but it happened, unfortunately. Um, so, the, um, the senator has uh, put a band the legislation that they're trying to pass bans pet putting pets in overhead bins requires the pets to have access to food and water and mandates animal welfare training for employees because they're also saying you know like you know this woman wasn't properly trained how to deal with, deal with she says she doesn't know didn't know with animals in there who knows but that mm-hmm. you know they need to know how to properly deal with animals on the flights because that, that happens yeah. uh, people bring their animals on the flights i brought with i brought penny with me several times on a plane so, and do you put her at your feet or on your lap or she's in a, well, she, I don't do it anymore. Like the few times I did do it, she was in a carrier and then she, she's so tiny, she was so tiny, especially yeah. then she just went under the, the, the carrier seat. didn't get smushed or anything. It just went under the seat, under the yeah. seat and I could see her and everything. And yeah. yeah. So. And she, does she didn't mind being in there for that long? No. Would you ever give her drugs? Well, no? no, 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 never. Um, and also this was only from Orlando to Cleveland. It was two and a half hours. Oh, yeah, that's true. So it was a short flight. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have put her on for, like, four or five, whatever, hours. This was, like, a really, sh- just whoop, whoop, you know. Mm-hmm. It was a short flight. Um, and I could see her the whole time and all that. So, um, but I, you know, I, I'm someone that has fun with my dog. So, you know, this, this can make people do it. So, 
there definitely needs to be some accountability and training and every all the above. So they're uh, trying to get this passed. And as I said before, the flight attendant said she didn't know there was a dog in the carrier. United issued an apology saying pets should never be placed in an overhead bin. Duh. You think? Um, yeah. I uh, said, and then in the same week, if the dog died, the airline had two more mishaps involving dogs. Um, a dog was accidentally sent to Japan instead of Kansas City. Oh my gosh. And then yeah. a dog was put on a plane by mistake and the flight had to be diverted. So, but those dogs were, they were fine. They, they're alive and they're fine. But um, this just kind of goes to show you, you know. They're not putting there's a there's 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 work that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, I know people, like, I feel for people that have, like, really big dogs that can't go on the plane and they have to go in cargo. I would never put my dog in cargo. Mm-hmm. Like, I get, like, you know, some people don't have a choice, but, oh, my God, like. Nowadays, it's just, you it's would so... just go to a psychiatrist and get a well, you, I mean, paperwork. I mean, and can you bring a German on Shepherd on a plane even if they're a support dog? I think so. It doesn't matter how big they are. No, because the last time I was on, not the last time I was on a flight, but the last time I was on a flight where there was a dog, mm-hmm. it was like a big dog. Like it took a, like, it, it was at seat. the feet, it was at the feet of all three people. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good. I'm glad. Because, I, I mean, I don't know if, if they have that arrangement, that's probably different, but you couldn't, have, like when I was flying with Penny, they didn't it, do it was, it was lesson, right? 10 pounds and under that you couldn't mm. bring your dog on the, on, in the cabin if they were, Penny was about nine pounds or something. So, um, so yeah, so this definitely is something that needs the tension brought to it. Um, cause it's, you know, it, it happens. So poor little baby. I feel bad for that little, little dog. It was only 10 months old. So that's really little puppy. Sad. Yeah. So we'll end on a high note on that. Um, so San Francisco has burned <laughs> it's burned it's gone aren't we happy no that's not what i was saying <laughs> san francisco has banned fur which is a great amazing thing that everyone is very excited about. did you did hear about this yes okay <laughs> um so san francisco just voted to ban all sales of fur within the city limits so it's a historic victory for millions of animal cruelty animals cruelly, cruelly confined and killed for their skins and hides. Um, and we know we've talked previously about Berkeley and West West Hollywood, I believe. Mm-hmm. Hollywood, West Hollywood. Um, burn, <laughs> burning. <laughs> um, we've talked about Berkeley and West Hollywood banning fur within their city limits. But San Francisco is the biggest city to do this. So this is like the biggest city ban on fur that's oh, cool. in the U.S. at this point. So Good. it's a big deal. Um it will go into effect January 2019, which is, you know, sometimes we talk about the thing and it's like five years down the line, like mm-hmm. this, like less than a year. It's, it's in, you know, it will be law of the land. Um, and it states that the sale of fur products in San Francisco is inconsistent with the city's ethos of treating all living beings, humans, and animals alike with kindness. Oh. The ban includes all retail sales and online sales of fur to San Francisco addresses. So if you live in San Francisco, you can uh, go to offline and have it shipped good. to you. I mean, you'd have to probably have it shipped to, your to like Menlo house. Park and yeah. drive down and get it or something. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so that's good. I've had Make it harder shipped yeah. to people, other people. There's a lot of places that will only deliver to San Francisco, and since I live outside of San Francisco, I've often have things shipped to my friends' houses. Okay, well, all the people in San Francisco have to get their <laughs> nasty ass fur shipped somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, even though I feel like there's not tons of people wearing fur in San Francisco because they're no. like it's cold so. there though. But <laughs> it's I not know. fur cold. Is it not? It's not the Yukon. I feel cold whenever. I'm there. No, it is colder than like the South Bay, but it's it's not fur cold. Not That's fur like cold. wilderness type of shit that you need fur. <laughs> if 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 I don't think anyone wears wear. it because they need it. Also, no, I know, but you I think they justify it. I do think they justify the purchase. Maybe. By saying that they it keeps them warm and that vegan materials can't possibly keep them that warm. I guess. I, I hope they sleep, they cuddle up and sleep well at night with that excuse. <laughs> but not in San Francisco. You're sleeping on the cow train going south or wherever because <laughs> you can't do it in San Francisco. So that's great news. That's local, but that that's a big, that's a big blow to the fur industry, like all over the world. So yeah. that that is a big deal because I've also. Not just not just another city banning it, but the size of San Francisco yep. and the population of San Francisco, like versus Berkeley and West Hollywood. So, hooray! Yay. Good job, San Francisco. 
Now we just need New York. And California, yeah. because all of them are in California. All the cities are in, oh, yeah. that I know of yeah, that's are true. in California. So. And I one's right across the bay. <laughs> has a higher vegan population than any other state. Uh, uh, I probably, and I would say more than New York because New York is only New York City and we have LA and San yeah. Francisco. So I think. Yeah. And the people, I know people who live in North New York and they're like, hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, there's a lot of people that are kind of like that in the middle between here and, and LA too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's quite as bad. Probably not. But, but we have. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I feel we like have I'm getting own. a big hole here. That's gonna be real offensive. Uh, we have some like not as liberal in the middles and on the tops and then the bottom. Well, not the bottoms, the tops of the state and the middle of the state. Maybe I think the that middle. Wouldn't... I think the top is pretty. Like the top are all like the pot growers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. So then I definitely would say probably yeah. <laughs> so so that's good news. That's great news. Yay! Thanks. So, Robin, what's been happening at the dollhouse? Well, uh, there was some travel, as you know. Um, so I talked about how I saw the elephants at the Paws Sanctuary. You mean your elephants? My elephants! They're so cute. Mm-hmm. I did not want to go. I was so sad when the day was over and I had to leave. Um, but I did the one that was like a Saturday. You can do one that's like a whole weekend where you, like, stay at a bed and breakfast nearby. But I just did the one Saturday one, or maybe it was a Sunday. It was Saturday. And um, they do a picnic. And so you walk, you're walking the whole time because each elephant has, like, a ton of space, like, so much space. So you're, it's a lot of walking. And then you get to, like, the very top of this hill, and they have, like, all these picnic tables laid out and this whole, like, little buffet of... All, it's all vegan food that they offer for the lunches. Oh, wow. That's cool. Which is really cool. Um, and it's, like, the most breathtaking view. You're on the top of this hill and all you see is just land and river and elephants. And it's just... It was, like, the Hopefully best Hopefully an elephant meal. didn't, like, take a huge, humongous dump while you're eating, right? <laughs> like, in your eye line. That always seems to happen when I was a kid and I went to the Cleveland Zoo. It'd be like, oh, look at this animal and then they'd be like Pfft. and like poop everywhere and i'd go to the next one and they'd do the same thing i'm like G- guys like can't i <laughs> come <laughs> I on not see that like every everybody come i didn't on. see anyone poop while i was there i did see someone pee and an elephant penis is gigantic wait you saw someone pee or you saw yeah, a penis pee. i saw a penis pee oh okay okay yeah okay I and didn't it know was meant- they okay, were, so that was just their, that was their, just peeing size. Their penis is like retracted till they have to pee. Then the penis comes down, and you're just like, "Is that a fifth leg? <laughs> Another trunk? What oh, is I, it?" Oh, I wonder if that's like this the baby making like extension yeah. as well, yes. or if that's even. I think more. so because they told us they saved that elephant for the end, and they told <laughs> yeah, us I bet they did. End. He's a showstopper. Uh, they don't call it heat. There's a word for it. It's not called heat, but uh-huh. they have a word for when the elephants are in this. And they're in it for like months at a time sometimes. Um, and I guess that's the only elephant they have that's not fixed. Uh-huh. Um, and so, yeah. So he I don't was, know. He was proud in that day. Yeah, he was, he like, he was me, showing it off. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I took pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> because it was the biggest penis I've ever seen. <laughs> How could I not? Uh, anyway, God, how did we get on that? You brought it, you said, I saw a pee, I saw it pee, okay, and then you said it had a big penis. Oh, was, anyway, the picnic was lovely is all I wanted to say. <laughs> I recommend We're like, oh, what a beautiful pause. picnic, <laughs> what a beautiful picnic with like the trees yeah. and the water, and do you oh. see that, that <laughs> <The> elephant <laughs> dong? Oh my God. <gasps> I mean, I'm sure everyone must have been thinking the same thing. No yeah, one was uh-huh. taking pictures, I don't know why. It's um, so it's the area of California that pauses in is, um, it's kind of like halfway between Sonora and Sacramento. So we went to pause and then we drove up to Sacramento and I don't really spend much time in Sacramento because I don't feel like it has more to offer than the cities that are closer to yeah. us. I've only been once. Yeah. I'm like whatever. I've seen um, it. and so, but I was like, oh, we're already over there and it was like a three day weekend. So I was like, let's just make make a make the best of it um and I did have some good food while I was there there's a j- vegan gelato that's called conscious creamery um that was really delicious 
Yeah, maybe you do. I do too. <laughs> Everywhere that I have not been, I'm like, I, think I follow them on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I really, really liked that gelato. It was delicious. And then Pushkin's is like, they have a bakery and then they have a separate place for brunch that has all their baked goods there too. Not all, not as many as in the bakery, but the, we swung by the bakery and the line was so long and we weren't even like, we were kind of like, Oh, maybe we'll go to the bakery. But there was like a really cute coffee shop next to the Pushkin's bakery, mm -hmm. which is also next to the food co-op, which is also next to this revolution wine place, which don't go there. Um, and the line was like half a block long. I was like, wow. This is all vegan place. It's an all vegan bakery. Yeah. Wow, that's what's good to see. Yeah, I'm always like, I never really feel. I'm, always, I'm never, I'm never like oh, a line. Cause I'm like, oh yay, like yeah. a vegan place is getting, yeah. getting business. So that's exactly what I thought. I was like, there needs to be more. Yeah, because there's really not a lot of vegan stuff there. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like. Um, anyway, we tried going to Revolution. Oh, I did go to this place. It's just like a regular pizza place, um, and they just happened to have a vegan menu, like a little. And oh, I got these delicious, like, cheesy breadstick things oh, that were so yum. good. Yeah. Um, and that place was in a smaller city outside of Sacramento. So it was kind of, like, on the way from Paws to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, like, a good stop stopover. Uh, but, yeah, so I picked the wrong place for dinner. It's, like, a wine place. It was really fancy when you walk in. You think it's going to be great. They have... You know, you like high quite a few vegan okay. things. Yeah, well, I saw the vegan things on Instagram and they looked really good. And I was like, oh, I really like fried oyster mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had them at Millennium. I love them. And you know how much I don't like mushrooms? I eat, like, some of those. Yeah. I not the big chunks because then it's all slimy inside. Yeah. But, like, the outlier the ones, ones. That are more like, breading more, yeah. than mushrooms. I yeah. eat those. That, that's how good they are. And they really are. So, yeah. So anyway, I went there. They fed us actual oysters. It was the oh, worst moment of my life. That's gross. Maybe not my life, but it was a very bad moment. Your vegan food life? My vegan food life. It was very upsetting. I've disgusting. never had an oyster prior to being vegetarian or vegan, so I didn't, you didn't, I didn't know. know. Yeah, I didn't know what it looked like or what it was supposed to not be. Anyway, very upset. Don't go to Revolution Winery, Wines, whatever it's called in Sacramento. Um, it goes somewhere else. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. It was really, really bad. Um, so that's the places I've been eating that aren't in the dollhouse. And in the dollhouse, I've made some fun stuff. I made a bunny cake for Easter. I helped. You did help. It couldn't have happened without me. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley was very helpful. She picked the eyes. I did. She had multiple sets of eyes to choose from. She picked the eyes for the bunny. And she helped me figure out the good a good placement for the facial features. She helped me hold up the ears when they were trying to get floppy. <laughs> There's a lot of helping going on. Um, and she helped me eat it after. I, yeah, I was rewarded <laughs> with a slice. So. Um, so the Funfetti Bunny Cake was kind of a practice cake for a Funfetti Cake I'm going to be making next month. Um, but the recipe is on vegandollhouse.com and I made a red panda carrot soup. Um, do you, do you like Sanrio characters or no? I think they're cute, but I really don't know any of them. Okay. Like they're all, they're all adorable, right? Yeah. But I, I don't really know. I was into Hello Kitty for a hot second. I yeah. I got over it. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, I guess coming out with new characters regularly. I don't really keep up with them either that much. I like have my favorites. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a new character that came out like two years ago, maybe. Um, and it's a red panda who is, she's an office worker by day, but she <laughs> listens to heavy metal, like death metal. Um, and so <clears throat> it's a lot of like the, her like being cute and then her like, her like Clark Kent Superman and, life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cute. Um, so a lot of the like, um. Uh, what do you call it? Paraphernalia? No. Yeah. Oh. yeah, sure. Yeah. Merchandise. Okay. The merchandise um, at the Sanrio store is like kind of like you get the two sides. Like mm -hmm. it'll be a hoodie and it'll be like sweet, innocent her on one side and then heavy metal her on That's the other cute. side. It is cute. Um, and so I guess, I think Netflix is coming out with a series based on her soon. Anyway, she's been like a hot topic. So, and I love red pandas. They are like so cute. Yeah. And so I've been wanting to make this soup for like two years, probably since when I got my laptop stolen. I like had the recipe all typed up, but I hadn't posted it. And then my laptop got stolen. So 
I like didn't do it for a long time because I was sad. Couldn't face it. Yeah, I couldn't, think so. Couldn't, couldn't face it. Like thinking about having to rewrite it made me think about my stolen laptop and yeah. made me have a little pity party. I have to like doing everything over. You yeah. Did. No, that would that was what would bother me. Like I already did this. Yes. I'm wasting time. I already did it. Yeah. It's like what was better just like it never ha- like I just it just doesn't happen again. Oh God. Have you ever had where you like it's like word crashes and you didn't save oh. your file? And it's like gone. I am a I am a serial saver. Oh, that's good. Um, but I've had. But are you a serial saver because you had one bad experience? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. But I, I've had uh, like similar. Yeah. Something gets deleted to, or disappears. That's the worst. And it's just like. Yeah. You just don't even wanna. No, you don't. Forget it. Whatever yeah. it was. Whatever. I know. It's over. <laughs> I feel the same way. Um, I feel the same way about making outfits too. If I make a dress and it like doesn't fit right, I like don't want to mess with it again yeah i'd rather just give it away after putting hours of time yeah, <laughs> yeah. i get I'm that like over it um anyway so the red panda carrot soup is finally up it was worth the two-year wait i don't know if it was but it's <laughs> delicious and it's super cute. i say it was <laughs> I say, and i'm the expert here because yeah. i have the microphone <laughs> um and I made pizza cones, which oh, I got the idea yeah. from JC Labs. I don't know if you've had his food at any of the festivals in LA, but mm, I don't think so. Um, they came out pretty good. I think they're cute. Uh, and Pokeball pizza waffles, which we will be remaking on our cooking show next weekend. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned for information yeah, about that. Stay tuned. Uh, and. Oh, I made some mini cheesecakes, but that recipe is not on my website because I used, I could like modified someone else's recipe. So it's just on my Instagram account, but they turned out really cute because I used blue spirulina in them for my first time using that. It's a very pretty color. I like cheesecake. <laughs> is it, is it better than a banana split? Oh, mm. time to rate it. Ooh, I think we have your next birthday cake idea coming up. They're, they're so different. It depends on mood I'm in. Okay. Is that a, can I go there? Yeah. Is that course. good enough? Okay. I'm just totally just not Just planting answer. ideas for you to start thinking about. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and I also discovered a new sprinkle company, so I updated my vegan sprinkles post. I think you're all up on your blog. I did do some updates on my blog, but I'm still embarrassingly behind. Did you do the Austin one? That's no, the one I didn't we're going to care it. about. Okay. I'm start it. Are you going to do it by the time this comes out or no? No. It's only a couple of days from now. Um, but I didn't finish mine either. I only did four of I'm working days. on Vegas. I have like, I haven't added the pictures. I'm working on the Vegas stuff still from November. I did update some other places. Oakland, I added somewhere. Like the donut gelato. Oh, Vegan yeah. donut gelato. Good. I, I, it's a few like here and there places that I've kind of picked up. I have so I have updated. I have been working on it. Oh, did you see that Vegan Donut Gelato is going to be at Vegan Drinks next month? Did I? That is, that sounds kind of familiar, but if you want yeah. to go, let me know. Oh, Vegan Drinks. We'll talk about that after off off my. I was like considering eating dinner at home and then just going there for Vegan Donut Gelato, but they do have somebody's doing dinner also. Yeah, a company of. When is heard it of, though? I don't think. I, my next month is like... Oh, it's too busy. I'll tell you the date cray cray. as soon as we're done recording. Although, okay. I'll we will <laughs> <laughs> True to us. I'll be like, later I'll be like, when was that? I forgot, I forgot to ask about it. Oh my gosh. This new tablecloth I got from Lizzie's, I need to like surge the edges. It's like falling. It's like seriously raining threads on me as we speak. It's raining threads. <laughs> Um, okay, well, since you didn't update your Austin blog post, I think you should just tell us. Okay, yeah, so now we'll tell you all about our Austin Palooza oh, trip. Oh, that's a good name. I like Austin it. Austin Palooza. Even though we didn't go together. Ready Let's pretend made we went title. together. Ready made episode title. Boom. Oh, Done. yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's so good at this. <laughs> I'm always looking for some random ass thing I can make the title. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. good. I think it's more appropriate than elephant penises for sure. <sighs> That's right, I forgot we talked about that. Huge no, elephant Austin dongs. Palooza. Okay. Austin Palooza. I'll let you win this once. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious to see what you think overall thoughts of Austin as a city. What were your thoughts? Um, well, I think that uh, it's it's a little warm. I mean, I like warm weather, but it's a little too humid. Okay. That's one 
thought that mm-hmm. I had. Um, I like that everyone's nice. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's friendly. Even like neighbors, they just like say hi to you while you're walking. Even the cats are friendly. Some Howdy. stray Did cat you got of- oh, in the car. Y'all. Did you get y'all a lot? Oh, I don't know. We got y'all a lot. Y'all? y'all. Like as in y'all. a response or as a Sorry, greeting? y'all. Or hi, y'all. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Oh, there was a there was a term I kept hearing. And I remember thinking, I don't hear that anywhere but here. Oh, I appreciate you. Everyone would say I appreciate I you instead of I appreciate it. Huh. That's weird. I didn't hear that at all. Yeah. I heard it multiple times and I was like, something about that sounds weird. And then I thought about it and I was like, oh, because we always say I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. And they always said, thanks. I appreciate you. And I was like, oh, that's a Texas thing, I guess. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think I noticed that. Oh, yeah. But we did get y'all a lot. Y'all. All yeah. right. What about you? Um... So I had super high expectations for Austin. I think mean, that's part of my problem. Hmm. Um, and I found it strange. Where did you get unsettling. your high expectations from? Just, Just so Austin is like so cool and like the vegan food can't like know we're better and just just all of like the hype oh uh, because it's the best vegan city in in Texas. Oh well, yeah, that's not like that's a competition, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I just like even like the the culture there and the just atmosphere like was supposed to be like just unbeatable and like amazing mm. and i think that's like i think the caveat for that is for texas yeah for texas um totally so i wouldn't rush back honestly yeah. i had a lot of weird interactions with people it was mm. odd and everyone that was super nice mm-hmm. wasn't from there everyone that I, we had like conversation with um and then we start talking and stuff. And I'm like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from here. I'm from there. Nobody was from Texas. Did you meet people from here? I met people from here. From California? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you did. Mm. We, I met people who moved away from here because it was getting too expensive. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a, that's, when people move from the Bay Area, I feel like, if you did like top five cities people moved, like t- moved to from the Bay Area, I think Austin definitely on there. Yeah. It's one of the places people go. I think Portland Austin. Yeah, Portland for sure. Yeah, I think those are two places that people move yeah. from here. Because it's, it's, it's I wonder similar in ways LA. and it's way cheaper. I mean, LA I think is still cheaper than here, right? Yeah. yeah. I was I was pricing places while we were down there last and yeah, it's quite a bit cheaper. Yeah. Would you ever move to LA? Yeah. 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 I could see myself living there. Yeah. Matt would go in a minute too. He loves it down there as you know. So, uh, yeah. Um, I like it up here too, though. Everyone's just like, oh, that's this whole like rivalry of like LA. You can't like both LA and San Francisco. I mean, it's super, it's it super, like super different. But like, people are so polarized about it. I like both places. Um, I guess when I was so young, close, I, I, I felt more strongly against LA because me too. I think when you're younger, you're dealing with a different, um, like not genre of people, but like, what is the word? A group of people, type of people, um, like it's like a dem- different demographic. Okay, that's the word I was trying to think of. It's a different demographic of people there that you're meeting when you're like in your twenties mm-hmm. versus when you're in your thirties. Because I feel like I would go to like bars or like whatever, and it's like the the mm-hmm. younger crowd in LA is like not my favorite Mm -hmm. at least that's how I felt when I was younger but now when I go there and I just like do my own thing and hang out with people who are like in the vegan community um or hang out with like friends who I've been friends with forever it's it's never like I never get that vibe Mm -hmm. I'm like getting better because you have your own friend group or 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 social group down there so yeah that makes sense so um yeah so I, I liked Austin not as much as I hoped I would right um but I'm glad I went yeah, so. I so had some what good do you food. think about the fact that everything's a food truck? I don't like that about any city. I don't, I don't like it about Portland. I don't like it about Austin. I don't really have you any don't care. feelings about it. As long as it's not like raining and I get my food, outside. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Yeah, yeah. Other than that, or it's freezing out, or makes you yeah. just stand there freezing eating my food. That's how I feel about Portland. Other like it's raining like, and cold. And other I'm than standing yeah, other than like food. weather condition stuff, I, I don't care. Hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. You're more easygoing. Doesn't bother me. Okay, so let's just start at the top, I guess. Okay. So, well, speaking of hype, um, Austin hype, Arlo's was like, oh my gosh. I was told, like, best place ever, everything. Oh my God, Arlo's, Arlo's, Arlo's. So, we went there, like, first thing, like, that was our first meal. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, our 
bacon cheeseburger is the best thing. And I was like, okay, but I'm not, that's not really, bacon no. cheeseburger is not really my thing. I got a chicken sandwich and then we got fries. I mean, yeah, we did get fries, but we got like their mac and cheese, um, tacos. And Matt also got a, the, the bacon mac and cheese. I mean, the bacon cheeseburger. cheeseburger. Um, How were the mac and cheese there? The mac and cheese was, was decent. It was pretty okay. good. good. Um, the tacos were like whatever forget about them like you walk away you don't even think about them again they weren't Mm -hmm. bad they weren't bad enough to remember or good enough to remember yeah the chicken burger was like trash Mm. like trash on a bun Mm. the bacon cheeseburger was very good Mm. so we did decide to go it was so good i had a bite of mats and it was good enough where we went back and we just both got that and that is like the only thing they do good i think Mm. the mac and cheese was okay it was it was good the mac and cheese was good i think maybe I, it was a little bit colored by everything else was so bad that the mac and cheese in comparison was very good. Yeah. But in a blind taste test, I don't think I would have picked like mac and cheese out from somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, well, when we yeah. and I went there, I don't remember if we got a burger. I just remember getting tots and it was like this giant order of tots, which I'm like obsessed with tots and I feel like not enough vegan places make tots. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of Omni places make it, but then you don't know if they're cooking it in oil with gross stuff so I feel like it's not something I get very often and I remember getting tots there but like I don't remember yeah I don't remember their food whatever whatever we got with the tots I obviously don't remember at all so it must not have been yeah good I didn't even go back this trip because I was like I yeah, didn't remember I it being good. I mean, I don't know. I would go... Th- that one burger was good enough for me to probably go back. But if, if I hadn't had that, I'd be like, no, I'm not coming back here. Yeah. At all. Um, so a place... A food truck... <laughs> food truck and food truck. All the couple of... The, these all three... The first three are all food trucks. Um, the, the next one that was recommended to my husband was Sundays, which is an Omni place that does like uh, fried chicken sandwiches, but they do a vegan version. And so I was like still super full. So he just had food and I took a bite of it and I actually really liked it. He said it was like too bland, but I kind of don't like my chicken sandwich to be like crazy. I like Mm -hmm. it pretty simple sometimes. So I really liked it actually. I would have went back there. How was it compared to the chicken sandwich that Vegan Nation makes? Um, I don't, I think I, I think I had their chicken sandwich, but, um, it was, it was way plain. Okay. It was way plain. There wasn't, like, a lot of spices or anything. Like, it wasn't the best chicken sandwich I've ever had, but I liked it. So, hmm. um, for what it's worth, there you go. As an Omni place, um, what percentage of their menu was vegan? They had um, that the that sandwich, and then they had, like, like wings or something. Vegan chicken wings or something like that. But that was it, basically. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, and then the next food truck was the Vegan Nam. So we so went good. there for breakfast before we left. That was our last meal there. Mm. And I had the breakfast top tacos. So I had the tempeh one, potato one, um, and then we had the bre- breakfast quesadilla. Um, and they were really good. I was really happy with their food. It was delicious. Um, I had yeah. one of their breakfast tacos too, and they were so good. And then I also had the one that you would have hated. Um, but... I, oh, I had mushroom thought it was something? really good. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. I thought it was super good. It was really affordable. They have super cute wall art in the area. Yeah. And for anybody who wants to hit up a few spots at a time, it's like perfectly located right by Capital City Bakery and right by Counterculture. So mm-hmm. it's like yeah. a good location. Yeah. So I really liked that. Um, and then the next place is Street Ritual, which is a actual brick and mortar um, vegan ice cream place. So big surprise! I had a banana split, um, and the did you put the exclamation points or did I? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm like I don't remember. Why did I put those exclamation points? Um, so the flavors I had on it was the peanut butter cup, unicorn poop, and then Oreo cookie, and it came with sprinkles, nuts, and caramel, but no whipped cream. Which I feel like how can it be a banana split without whipped cream on it? But oh, they used to have whipped cream. I don't. I didn't mm. see it as a topping. Um, mm. So. I mean, they might, but maybe they were out of it, or who knows. But, but our um, location is so small. Yeah, it was pretty small. It was, it was a nice day, so we sat outside. Uh, and then, like, there were benches there. So, uh, yeah, I liked it. It was good. Um, I also got the peanut butter cup ice cream. That shit is fucking good. Yeah. That good. is a good ice cream. The, the, um, the it's so creamy. The unicorn poop wasn't very good, but it was so pretty. I yeah. was like, I had to do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's why I got that one. Uh, else is on it? Yeah, I thought it was super cool that they had one of those old school sticker machines. Yeah, I did see that. And like the proceeds go to like organizations, um, which I thought was really cool. 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't like their new location. I liked the old location. I don't know why you would move and move into a smaller location. Mm, I don't know. I didn't, this is my first time there, so I didn't see that one. Except that I guess <clears throat> it's not as far out of the way now as the old location was, but anyway. Okay, so the next was Counterculture. Um, I went there for brunch. Um, very popular place. Before it was even open, there was a line to get in for brunch. Um, we had Matt, Matt had the breakfast burrito, which he really liked. I had the peanut butter pancakes with um, spelt biscuits and gravy on the side. And, oh, you had mac and cheese. I was like, I can't get mac and cheese. <laughs> um, and it was all very good. The, the pancakes were gluten-free, so that took it like, down a bit. But they were still very good. But the... Biscuits and gravy were, were very good. Yeah. Were like, the biscuits uh, gluten-free also? I, they were spelt. Is that... No, that's not gluten-free. Okay, so they wasn't then. Um, I also, like, the best, like, vegan, like, biscuits and gravy, like, Cleveland vegan, and this was pretty close to that. So mm-hmm. I was happy with what I got there. Good. Um, I had the mac and cheese, which was also gluten-free, but you never would know it. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah. Um, I had to get it off the kids' menu because that's the only place you could get it. And it was really delicious. And then just going, walking down the street from there is Capital City Bakery, all vegan bakery. And I got a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to list it out. It was all good. I'll just put it out there. Okay. So I got a loaded cookie butter brownie, a cinnamon roll, um, frosted raspberry scone, uh, and uh, cupcakes. And I got confetti, strawberry. I think ginger was one of them. And mm-hmm. I think a mocha. Matt, those were two are mats. But um, since it was, I went there on my birthday, I got a confetti funfetti one okay good yeah um i got the coconut cream pie Mm -hmm. and it was really really good i haven't had coconut cream pie in ages um and i had the carrot cake cupcake which was also they didn't have i I didn't have i like carrot cake i didn't i don't think the only thing that was not my favorite about it is it had raisins in it (laughs) oh i would have been okay with that which i like raisins as like a snack of raisins. I just don't Not like in, finding them in my thing. Yeah, I, I would be okay with that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then Bolden Creek oh, Cafe. Can I also bring up one thing? Yeah. For anyone who hasn't been to Capital City Bakery, if you've been to Portland and you've been to... Uh, I don't know where. Petunias. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If you've been to Petunias and you like the aesthetic at Petunias, then you will also like the aesthetic at Capital City Bakery. I would say it's in the same ballpark because yeah. they're both cute. Yeah. I mean, it's Austin's version, so it's not as good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, but I like how in Austin, a lot of the places are just made out of houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's they're cute. converted. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so, Bolden Creek Cafe. I had two meals here. Um, oh, me too. One, one breakfast and one dinner. Um, so we had the, um, Joe's smoking omelet, uh, which was a tofu omelet. Um, and then it had a bunch of stuff on it. I'm not going to go over all this. And then I had the blueberry cornbread, which I like cornbread. So how to get that. And then when I went for dinner, I got the autumn pasta, autumn, autumn pasta penne when it had, it had, did it have mushrooms in it and I ate them. Look at you. Yay. Growing as a person. I had butternut squash sauce and it had like ricotta and all kinds of like a ciabatta on the side. It was like really like good hearty like mm-hmm. comfort food. I was happy. It was so good. I was happy. Um, and we also got their um, guacamole before that, which was actually really, really good. I think it had like a lot of citrus in it, like citrus juices, which is, I like that in my um, guacamole. Um, and then for dessert, we had, um, it's called a Jackie Special, so it's basically a peanut butter cup with vanilla ice cream on top and then chocolate sauce on top of that. Oh, that like a big, fun. a big peanut butter cup. Oh, and it was fun. delish. I wanted to get the root beer float when I was there, but I was trying to save my appetite for the next place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well. There's a bakery across the street from there that has vegan stuff, too. I don't know if you went there. Mm, I don't think so, no. Um, I also went to Bolden Creek twice, and even though there were still places on my list that I didn't get to go to, I still went twice because I thought it was that good. And I think when I told you about it, you're like, you went twice? I think yeah. you were all shocked that I went twice and then you went yeah, twice. Yeah, <laughs> there's, because there's so many other places. Well, yeah. also because I had been there. And it was yeah. just like, I was like, oh, I remember, yeah. I mean, like, I hadn't eaten there. I had like gotten food to go for the plane, mm-hmm. but I didn't remember it being like exceptionally Remem- good. Yeah, memorable. Yeah. But I think after you go there and you go to all the other places, 
And you yeah. realize that everything else is a food truck. Mm-hmm. And you're you like, oh, that's the only have, place where you can just sit down. Sit down and have food and it's yeah. open all day. Yeah. Yeah. So. Breakfast, um, lunch, and dinner. So. So I, yeah. So I went good. back also. Yeah. Um, things that I liked about it. I just, I ordered, the things I ordered were really affordable, which I thought was really interesting because I don't think that that's a possible thing here. Like, I can't think of one place where we can go get affordable vegan food. Yeah, I guess I don't... It's weird. I'm weird. I really... I pay attention to cost of everything. Like, I'm really cheap, but not food at all. Uh, Anywhere. I don't look at... I don't look at what food costs. In the grocery store, at a restaurant, everything else I pay attention to, but not food. I just don't care. Yeah. Like... It's weird. I don't know. I just don't care. So I didn't even. I I don't know what's expensive, what's not with food. Because I just Um, get what I want. There was a top. You try to make me like buy like a roll of toilet paper. I think it's too expensive. I'll throw a fucking (laughs) pissy fit. But you want to sell me eight dollar burger? I'll be like, okay, that's the bear. (laughs) Well, I'm not a conditional miser. (laughs) Just a miser all the rest of the board. That's my only one. I guess I don't know. Um, and I. I think this breakfast taco was three dollars, and it was gigantic. It was like Cheap. the size of a burrito. It was so big. I mean, how can you like fill up on three dollars? That like doesn't happen anywhere here. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Anyway, so yeah. I was like shocked, and it was delicious. It was so good, and the kale salad was only like five dollars. So good for this big kale salad with like beets and stuff on it. Um, I just was like. I thought that that was really nice that they have affordable vegan food that you can eat out. Mm -hmm. Um, I also liked that it's the whole outdoor patio um, not only is covered in case it rains, which it does rain a lot there, but also is dog friendly. So you can pet dogs while you wait for your food, which is what I did. And I like that the bathroom stalls are made out of chalkboards. Yeah, I so wrote you stuff. Can draw pictures while you're I wrote pooped. stuff, and then I went in the next. I think it was the next day we went back, and it was all gone. So I put it back. Oh yeah, they they erase it every night, right? Yeah, I was like, nope. Put it back on there. Would you write? I was about going vegan because it's a vegetarian restaurant. Oh yeah, it is so, a vegetarian. We should be saying that which places are vegan, vegetarian. So everything. It's, well, I said Sundays. I oh, didn't yeah. say that one was Sundays and Bolden Creek. So far, are the only ones that are on. I me. think that's that's all of mine. All my other I ones. So all too. mine were vegan, other than that. <laughs> So okay. I was like, go vegan. I think I wrote, not your mom, not your milk or something. And good. <laughs> like nice. to shame all those bitches here. <laughs> or omnivores that were in there. Good. Um, anyway, so it was really good. Okay. Uh, so Bistro Vanish is a vegan food truck. And it's supposed to be like elevated, like food truck food. Like it's supposed to be like fancy-ish, even mm-hmm. though it's a food truck. Um, and so I got the orange French toast, which um, was really good. And they had also like the side to it was either their scrambled tofu or... Their breakfast potatoes. And I would definitely always go for the breakfast potatoes. But they were like, oh, you know, our scrambled tofu is really unique. And I was like, okay. It was cube tofu. It wasn't scrambled. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like literally scrambled, is yeah. you know, how it's supposed to be made, you yeah. know? And it was basically just cubed tofu that was cooked, however you cook it. And it had like all this like seasoning and stuff on it. And it was good, but it wasn't, but it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah. And it was all cold. Oh, so, um... Yeah. That wasn't good. Yeah. So, um, they shouldn't have been cold. It was cold out that morning, so I didn't want to eat cold breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> and it's supposed to be the stuff was supposed to be warm, yeah. so that wasn't good. Um, and then mm-hmm. conscious cravings. Um, we that's a brick and mortar place. I believe it's all vegan, and we were just so tired the day that we were going to go there. We had it delivered um, by whatever one of the delivery food delivery apps. Um, and we got the black and tofu wrap and it was actually really good. I would go back to like the brick and mortar place and try it out. Um, but it's mostly like wraps and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, but it was huge and it was, it was really good. So yeah, I there. asked to if he wanted to go there and he looked at the menu and he's like, no, <laughs> I, like I also it. tried to get him to go to the pizza place. Um, there's a pizza place that's not all vegan, but they use follow your heart mm-hmm. instead of Deo, which is nice. Um, and he was like, no. I was like, no. I was like, okay, someone's being picky pants. Um, so I didn't go to either of those places. But I went to Blue Cat Cafe, which is an all-vegan cat cafe. That was on my, like, B list. I've never been to a cat cafe because I'm Neither. they're not my favorite animal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this was my first experience, and I figured if I am going to go to one, might as well go to a vegan one. Because they have one in San Francisco. They have one in the East Bay. Yeah, they're very popular. I could go to one yeah. if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but since this one was vegan, I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, not great. I'm not glad I didn't go. First of all, so you, you went to Blue Cat Cafe for me and spared me it, and I went yeah. to Bistro Vanish yes. and spared you. Yeah. Okay, exactly. good. Um, and you pay to go in for that's the first thing that I was like, okay, that's weird. Cover. Yeah. <laughs> cat cover. Yes. Um, and the cats are not interested in you at all. They're just tolerating your existence. So it's not like you get to like play with them and pet them and stuff. They're probably like, just fucking leave me alone, yeah. everybody. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly how they are. Um, and I ordered... The drinks are gigantic. It's like if you went to Starbucks and got a large. Um, a grande. But they only have one size of coffee there. Um, but the coffee has the cutest names. So I was, of course, smitten with that. They're all like little cat puns. Um, so I got a per, per mint <laughs> <laughs> drink. And um, they had not that many food items on the menu. So I just got something plain. It was like a... Pita and hummus and veggies and dip. The dip was chunky. It was supposed to be smooth, and they just didn't feel like blending it all the way. I don't know. It had a cat hair in it, which maybe that's normal for a cat cafe. I don't know. I don't go to cat cafes. Mm -hmm. I feel like how can you really avoid it? I guess. I never even thought that that would be a thing, that you can serve food and have hair in it. But I guess how do you avoid it? Yeah, I don't know. I was yeah. not impressed. And the hummus was the worst hummus I've ever had. I've been eating hummus for a lot of years, people. <laughs> oh, no. And I eat it regularly. And it is not hard to make. I have never had hummus as bad as this hummus. That's disappointing. That's my review about the vegan cat cafe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to Spider House, which is a bar that has a vegan food truck in the parking lot and a vegan milkshake truck in the backyard. And so the food truck is called Cool Beans. It has tacos. They are delicious. There's a cute park across the street that you can eat them in if you don't want to sit in the backyard of a bar. Um, and the mel- the Milky Way shakes were so good. Like, really, really good. So Cool Beans was on my list. We went... We were going to have it delivered the night we got Conscious Cravings. That was our first choice. And they like had like a power outage or something, so they couldn't do it. So we went again, and then they were... They were like, oh, this they had on their Instagram. I didn't check their Instagram. But, oh, we're closing it. So I was at this location and I tried to have cold beans twice. Didn't Aww. happen. And then I wanted to go to Milky Way Shakes. It's right there. But then I was like, well, we're going to have dinner. So I was like, uh, we left and went back to uh, Bowling Creek Cafe. So I missed those two this Aww. time because it just yeah. didn't work out. Yeah, but that happens. They're definitely on my list if I go back. Yeah. Um, the first the first day that I was there and tried to go to Milky Way Shakes, they were taking some days off because South by Southwest. A lot of places actually were like taking some time off after South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. I think it just wears everybody out. Yeah. They're like, we need to make a small vacation. Yeah. Um, but in general, Spider House is just a really cool bar. The backyard is like super unique and fun. And I would definitely recommend going there. I, just, I went there and just hung out and journaled for a while. It was cool. Yeah. Like, we went at night, so, like, it was all, like, lit oh, up all I crazy bet. and stuff. Yeah. It was cool, yeah. Yeah, it's a cute place. Um, I went to Steel City Pops, which is not an all-vegan place, but um, about half of their menu is vegan. All of their juice pops are vegan, and their some of their creamed popsicles were vegan also. And I had the passion fruit pop, and it was delicious. And I went to Plow Burger, which is a pop, which pops up in a bar called Buzz Mill, um, and they have a burger of the week. They have three burgers, but they use Beyond Burger, so they're not making them themselves. Um, and the burger of the week changes every week, obviously, <laughs> but it's like kind of the more exciting one. Like it has more stuff on it. Uh, and then the kind of fun thing about. It being at Buzzmill is that they also have the zucchini kill baked goods. Did you didn't go to the bakery for zucchini kill? Did you? Oh, I think I I think it's right next door to um, Bistro Von Bistro, Bistro Vonish. Oh, yeah. Like Matt, so we were waiting for food. Matt just wandered in there, and he's like, "This is a vegan little bakery." Oh, and like, nice. Uh, like has all kind of metal stuff and like crazy yeah. stuff. And I was like, "Oh, so I went in there. We stumbled upon it by accident, stuff? and I forgot about it." No, because we oh. were going to like. 
we were going to get like sweet ritual right after. So uh, I didn't want to okay. get something, but we went in and talked to the girl and stuff. I forgot all about that. Um, but it was cool. Yeah. I like it. Their, their, their font is Iron Maiden font, which I think is cute. And they have like all these cute, they have the cute play on words, um, with all of their goods. Like mm-hmm. it's, yeah. I, I felt like. They all had kind of like a cute thing going on, but now I can't remember any of them. But anyway, I had Trust a s'mores me, it was cupcake cute. there. Um, and then later I had something else from them. And then we went to Beer Plant, which is, I think, a newer place that is all vegan. Um, and they had a pretty extensive menu, but because I'm on this like kind of strict diet, I couldn't really have everything I wanted. David ordered something that looked so good, like this fried chicken and mashed potato thing, and I just mm. wanted it so bad. But I got a gyro gyre. for my first time. A gyro? They're pronounced gyro, oh, no. I learned. No, I would say gyro. <laughs> um, and I'd never had one before. Yeah, well, that was on my list, but it had bad reviews. Oh, really? I don't know why. Happy Cow, so I didn't go. And That's it was so like weird. far out. It was pretty far out. Well, that's where rabbit food is. Yeah, I didn't go there. Oh, okay. So. Um, yeah, I guess we went. The, yeah, we went there the day we rented the car, so it didn't. It wasn't a problem for us that it was far. Um, I think that that is going to become the next vegan mall, because mm-hmm. the there's a sign, like out at the parking lot, where you would think there would be a sign talking about like what stores are in this plaza. It was like a kind of like a strip mall. You would never think that there would be vegan stuff in there. I like, it was very weird. They all have like super generic green awnings with super generic font Mm -hmm. and it all looked the same. All the places looked the same. And I was like, this place is so weird. Um, but there's a sign out very prominently displayed and it's a cartoon, like comic about like a vegan comic. And I was like, is that for this place or is it for rabbit food? Because they're all in the same plaza. And so I asked the people and they said the owner of the whole plaza is an animal rights activist. Hmm. And that they let, there's a another place in the same plaza that's like a cat adoption. Is that what you call it? Cat adoption? Cat rescue? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, sure. Some cat, cat adoption yeah. place. And they get to be there rent free. Mm. She lets them not pay rent. Cool. And I'm like, oh, this has got to be. This she would definitely be, be leaning next... towards animals. Yeah. You know. Yep. Um, but, you know, leasing or or just giving space to um, animal centric things. Yeah. So yeah, that that could definitely happen. So yeah, if you live in Austin and you're thinking about keep an eye on that, place. opening something, you know what they need is a vegan cafe. Mm-hmm. Like a, just a vegan coffee shop, like Timeless. Yeah. So that would be a good thing for that area. Anyway, um, so I thought that was kind of cool. I liked my food from there a lot. I can't imagine why they have bad reviews. Everything about it was I don't really even nice. Remember, I don't remember exactly what the problem was, but mm. it was enough and far enough away where I was like, nah, yeah. not on this trip. So. The food was good. The place inside was really nice. Yeah. Um, I went to Lick, which was a Omni ice cream place but they have four vegan flavors and they have a happy hour every day that does root beer and cold brew floats which i was like yeah my kind of happy hour Mm. um i went to Circuma, which is a vegan food truck that was cute and i got kitchery and it was delicious but i didn't feel like it was on par with the prices of the other food trucks in the area um, I felt I, I've made kitchery. I'm sure some of you have made kitchery. It's very easy. It's very inexpensive to make. So there's no reason why it should be $12 for a little bit of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is not a vegan place. Greater Goods was a new, um, really beautiful coffee shop that had just opened up maybe three weeks before. So it probably wasn't even open when you guys were there. Yeah. Um, But I really loved it. It's beautiful inside. It has a library. It's just, like, gorgeous. It has, like, sparkling and still water on tap. And it's... The coffees have... One of the options is, like, a homemade cashew almond milk that you can get for your latte. Um, And the space was just beautiful. They have Wi-Fi, lots of outlets. It's just really nice. So nice. So I worked from there for a while um, and it was lovely. I didn't want to leave. 
Uh, Biscuits and Groovy is a Omni Biscuits and Gravy food truck, and I think they have a brick and mortar. Yeah, I walked by a brick and mortar. Okay. I didn't even look at the menu because I didn't think it. I just, you just assumed just, it wasn't. Yeah, we were. I already had what I was doing. We just happened to walk by it walking somewhere because I noticed the name, but mm-hmm. I didn't didn't look about the menu. But yeah, it was a brick and mortar. So it's everything on the I menu think. can be made yeah. vegan, which is nice. Um, but I felt like it was too bland. Hmm. And their names were cute. They were all named after, like, famous people. Um, I got the MC Hammer, because <laughs> it was, like, the little kid size one, and I wasn't that hungry. Um, but yeah, I, I think it needed flavor. <laughs> That's all. Just some flavor would have been good, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't recommend going there. And last but not least, Revolution Vegan Kitchen was probably my favorite, um, it's another food truck, but it's really far south, um, where no, nothing else is basically. This isn't the, this isn't the barbecue one, right? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, uh, it seems like punk owned. Everyone was really nice who worked there. I like, uh, tagged them on Instagram. I couldn't find out how to get in touch with them. I feel like a lot of the food trucks don't have phone numbers or the phone numbers don't connect you to anyone. And I feel like when I'm on vacation, I, I always just want to check and make sure someone's there, yeah. especially when you're like taking a lift somewhere and you're spending money on that. So I tagged on Instagram and I said, are you serving food? And they got back to me like right away. And they were like, yeah, come down. Um, so I thought that that was pretty remarkable. Uh, they had fried pickles, which I'm a big fan of fried pickles. They had pink picnic tables. Hello. Need I say more? Mm-hmm. And they had zucchini kill baked goods also. And I had the horse shot at Twinkie. Sounds good. Anyway, I think we ate well. Oh my. <laughs> so I'm so glad we didn't rent a car because we did walk a lot. And yeah. I'm like, think. Yes. See? Yeah, we, you'd walked it all we off. Helped. <laughs> well, not, not quite all of it, but it helped. <laughs> it helped the digestion keep going so I could put more in. Yeah. So, yeah. We had a, we had a lot of good food. There's only a very few disappointments. Overall, very good. Yeah. I would go back. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't rush back, but no. I'd go back. Yeah. Put it that way. Yep. Okay. Same. Alrighty. Mm. Is it time for Wagger Wimper? I think so. Okay. This is our segment where we talk about a vegan product that we tried for the first time, and we decide if it made us wag or whimper. Do you have a wag or whimper? I don't. Okay. Well, I had some that I forgot, but I will tell you. <laughs> Save them. I will save them for next time if I remember them. Um, Surprisingly, kids, I have no whimpers for you today. Shocked. (laughs) Um, I tried hummus pods for my first time. Do you know what a hummus pod is? Like a little tiny, like, Yes, you know. Individual serving of a hummus? It's wrapped in a little dough pod. Oh, Oh, wait. I have had those. I bought them somewhere. Costco? I bought them at Costco. Costco. Okay. I did buy them somewhere. Okay. And we had them They're once like and they were in the good. freezer section. Yeah, and yeah. You bake them in the oven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have had those. They're Do you good. like them? Yeah, I only ever good. got them that once. I forgot about them, but they were good. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys see these hummus pods out in the wild, get them. They're really interesting, delicious. Highly recommend them. They made me wag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yesterday I got these chips. That were made by Farmhouse, which so I'm familiar with the company because of the sauerkraut, and they make these dill sauerkraut tortilla chips. So I was like, oh, I have to try these, and they have probiotics in them. So it's basically like health food. Yeah, healthy chips. Yeah, like you can just erase everything in front of probiotics and be like, <laughs> here you go. It's gonna help me go to the bathroom. I was just taking my probiotics. Yeah, um, but they were really good. I think they could have been more flavorful. Mm. But if I had to choose if they made me wag or whimper, I would say they made me wag. <laughs> there you go. And mm. I think that's it. Yeah. Is that all we have to say? I think so. All right. Did a lot of talking. Did you... Oh, we don't have the thing. So if everybody just tuned in and missed the beginning of this, that would be weird. But if you did, <laughs> we're doing a giveaway of some If you're like that weird scenes. person that has a fetish of only listening to the last three minutes of podcasts, <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> Um, I have some mini zines for you. It has a recipe, um, and a cute picture, and I just have it Made waiting to for come you to you. By Robin. So if you want to leave us a review, we would love it, and we'll send you a gift. And if you want to just 
check us out on other places. We're on social media. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. You, you can find all of... on YouTube, too. We're on YouTube. YouTube. You can find all of our social media handles on our website at dollsanddonuts.com. And if you just discovered us, start binging. Yeah, you got 30 episodes now. <laughs> you can do this in a month. Yeah. Um, and if you want to find Ashley on the internet, uh, you can find me and all my social media links at my blog, theveganadventure.com. Um, I am slowly but surely making updates on there. I have been working on it. Yeah. And you can find me at vegandollhouse.com. Okay. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Dolls and dolls.